This video is about ICARA props, in particular their use in the 2023 Science Olympiad flight event. So this is the typical ICARA prop that you receive in most of the kits. Uh, you can see it weighs uh, 1.58 grams. This is a fat Icara prop. It weighs 2.06 grams after trimming away the blade area behind the spars. The reason we do that is to make a flaring prop which is better for low ceiling heights, 24 feet and under. At high launch torque, the blades will flare to a higher pitch to depress the climb a little bit and after the torque bleeds off, they will return to their original position, which is a lower pitch, which is more efficient at that stage of the unwind. In effect, you get a variable pitch prop, which is legal for the 2023 Science Olympiad flight event and has been legal throughout the last 20 years when the predecessor right event was run. So when you get the fat Icara prop, for example, from Freedom Flight models, it's going to arrive with this thrust button, a little red bead, which acts as a washer, and you have your prop shaft. So you have to make this retrofitted so that it will fit the Science Olympiad bearing which is here. So what we're going to do is take this unit here, and squeeze the thrust button here, and cut off this shaft with wire cutters, of course. Then we can remove the thrust button, or whatever they call it, and you can see we have this tiny little bead. This is important to reduce the friction between the front of the aluminum thrust bearing, which has a pigtail here. And the, excuse me, that's the rear with the pigtail in the front. So the bead is going to go here. You can also use a Teflon washer. Each of them will provide the reduction in friction that you're looking for. So here I have a replacement shaft formed from 20,000th wire, which is the proper shape for going through, or diameter for going through the hub of the propeller. So the first thing I'm going to do is to insert well actually I've got that wrong. I'm going to insert it through the front leg of the aluminum thrust bearing. And bear with me, this is a very small hole for a 20,000 shaft. Sometimes you have a little burr on the end of the uh, shaft from cutting and makes it a little tricky to get on. Now the next tricky part here is getting this little bead on. And you can see I've been successful there getting that red bead on. They're going to put the prop shaft on. Excuse me, the prop. Of course the blade area faces forward. Again, I'm having a bit of difficulty getting this shaft. There we go. So now we're almost ready to bend over the shaft. Now it's important to understand that you don't want too much of this uh, shaft to go rear of the pigtail. If you have something like this, you have a tendency to get wobble maybe or it's just not as stable. 
what you want is something closer to to that where you have the very little of the straight portion of the shaft behind the pigtail. So I'm going to move this down here and taking into account the fact that there is a width of these needle nose pliers. So I can line this up about there, taking into account the needle nose pliers width of the jaws. And I want to bend this at 90 degrees to create a dog, they call it, a drive dog. 90 degrees to the plane of the hook. Notice I'm only holding the shaft with the pliers and bending this stub with my thumb. I don't want to put any pressure here because I'll bend that shaft. So about 90 degrees is good. Maybe a little bit back because the spiral ramp we're going to engage. Okay, I've gotten it there. So let's go ahead and snip this right here. And again, I only need about a sixteenth of an inch here. Let's first check this out, though. Check out the ramp. That looks pretty good. So you can see that shape looks pretty good for engaging the ramp. So I guess that's about an 80 degree angle. Okay. So let's cut this right here. Leaving about a sixteenth. That's all we need. Notice I'm holding this with my thumb here, but putting no pressure. And this is going to hold the stub so it doesn't fly across the room or into somebody's eyes. Snipping. Put that scrap away. Now, got to be careful here because I've almost lost that bead. Let's bring it back up. Now, let's go ahead and put this in the pigtail. You've probably done this before. It's a little tricky. And, of course, it goes without saying that... Uh, this thrust bearing would already be mounted on the motor stick. So you have to kind of get it at the right angle here to get between those to make sure you get in that hole twisting. And I'll keep doing it till I get it. And again, you don't want to break anything or bend anything. Very gentle here. There we go. So you can see I've gotten this. Now, one thing I've noticed here is that uh, the shaft is extending slightly down compared to the base of the thrust bearing. So that's going to be down thrust, which we do not want. I'm going to bend this front leg slightly up. There, I've eliminated that. So let's go back and look here. You can see I have just a little bit of the shaft extending about an eighth of an inch behind that uh, pigtail. And it's parallel to the base. And uh, it's gonna drive that motor, so we're now in good shape. And again, just to repeat, you can use a Teflon washer in place of this bead here. Um, the Teflon washers are very tiny. They're hard to insert. I found that if you put them on a tissue paper or something like that, you can hold them and insert the shaft through them because uh, the tissue paper will hold them. So that's the end of this video.